Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Friday here on this program, and you know what that means? We got all sorts of big news to talk about here today. Not the least of which is by far the biggest and most talked about story today. Cody versus Seth Rollins is four and a half stars. Holy smokes. All morning I've been hearing about this. How come Dave didn't rate the man? Ah, it's four and a half stars, everybody. We can all move on with our lives now. People get very, very angry about these these star ratings, and then they, you know, they scream about how they don't care and who cares. But man, you don't rate a match, and all of a sudden they care. Four and a half stars. The official star rating for that match in the Observer. All right, anyway, we've got a lot of other news to get into here today. It is a very, very busy weekend, and uh, we'll get into all of it here. we got Rampage coming up tonight. we got Rampage coming up next Friday. Next Friday, a very special day. Of course, it's a very big Rampage with a world title match, but they're also getting bumped. Uh, there is a uh, scheduling uh, deal, so we'll tell you about that. So uh, what is also interesting about it is that... Uh, I'll be doing the show live from Sports Byline. That's right. Going to San Francisco next week. So, you know, look forward to that. We'll talk about AEW New Japan and JPWWorld.com. We'll be carrying AEW programming. Yes, we'll talk about uh, the uh, whatever Tony Khan was, was tweeting about today. We're going to talk about that. I know a lot of people have been discussing it. We'll read the tweets and uh, tell you what we know. We got the Dynamite Ratings. New NXT Tag Team Champions will be crowned on Tuesday's edition of NXT Impact Wrestling got some updates on uh, Impact upcoming shows and uh, Tony Khan talks Cody Rhodes all sorts of stuff to get into today so a very very busy day we'll take your text messages 425-780-7566 is the number 425-780-7566 Brian at WrestlingObserver.com at Brian Alvarez on Twitter back in a moment Observer Live um, well, we got a lot to get into today, don't we, everybody? So let's not uh, let's not waste any time. So, kind of a well, let's just get into it. The online vitriol between fans defending the respective WWE and AEW products on social media is a daily occurrence in pro wrestling. It says here at WrestlingObserver.com. But Tony Khan says he knows why that is, an online campaign against his company. The AEW head took to Twitter Friday morning to claim that, quote, an independent study has confirmed that much of the staunch anti-AEW online community aren't real individuals. It's a staff running thousands of accounts plus an army of bots to signal boost them. Look closely. These aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing? Khan then went on to tweet, Research this one yourselves. You internet detectives thrive in these situations. He then plugged Friday's edition of Rampage. And then he wrote, Their boiler room staff is going to be working overtime on a Friday, and I love it. Several minutes after that, he questioned why so many of these accounts were just tweets and replies. Ever wonder, he says, why so much of the activity of these accounts is retweets and replies? Like, who actually has 80% of their activity as straight-up retweets? The source of the independent study, or the study itself that was cited in the original tweet, has yet to be identified. So I know, I know from looking around, ironically, social media, a lot of people saw these tweets and they decided that Tony Khan has completely lost his mind. Well, here's what I can tell you about this, all right? All I can tell you is this. So he did commission an actual study he owns an analytics company the the study or whatever i uh whatever you want to call it i mean this was a a legitimately commissioned study and uh they did tell him that they had discovered this okay now that's all i know about it I could tell you that uh, the under- my understanding is that this is not just like he's going to do a bunch of tweets and then, you know, we're done with it. I mean, there's more to come here. And uh, I-, I guess, you know, listen, when I saw the tweets, I thought, what is this guy talking about? 
But uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. This is not a made-up story. This is not him pretending. This is not whatever. Whoever he commissioned, that that's what they discovered, and that's what they told him. So who's doing this? I mean... It's for those of you that are wondering, like, well, why are there no, you know, why are there no sources? Why is there not more information out? Why did he leave it at this? Well, that is to come. And so this is not like the end of it here. And uh, my understanding is that they're not complete. Uh, the study is not complete yet. So anyway, uh, you're welcome to think that he's he's nuts. But this is not some guy who just like decided one day, oh, these eggs, you know, someone's paying for these eggs. Like, there was a real study, there was a real company doing the study, and the company did tell him what he tweeted today. So, whether this leads to more, I mean, you know. I would hope so. I would hope it leads to more just because in that, otherwise, why would you then tweet this with no, not showing who it came from, not showing that it's complete data, and just doing it that way. So, yeah, I, I would I would hope that there's going to be more to this. Why? I don't know. I, I don't know what the reasoning would be, but uh, we'll have to see. Uh, to be honest, with, with all of what he said, the one part you skipped over was, to me, the most entertaining part of his three or four tweets that he had here, which was, Reach, research this one yourselves. You internet detectives thrive in these situations. Speaking of wild things, you won't want to miss John Moxley and Wheeler Utah yeah. tonight on AW Rampage. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was the, the best part of the whole bit. Now, again, anything he tweets is going to get a lot of attention. And I know he, Tony Khan can be a spaz when he's out there and Samoa Joe and he's... I get it. I get all that. But he's obviously not a dumb human being. He, I just, again, he's not, he's obviously not doing this to leave it here because if he is just leaving it here, then he is being a spaz. So how, but uh, there is, a again, even if there is something to come from this, any negative pushback he does get, again, he, he didn't cite anything. He didn't really say anything besides the obvious that we all know, which is, there are people out there, there are a bunch of bots that hype things up. We went through this with politics, and we just know from our everyday lives, looking at social media, if you're somewhat savvy at all, that there's a whole lot of nonsense and bots out there that retweet and do stuff. So I, I'm interested to see how big this fire is uh, with these smoke signals he sent out. Well, I would also like to, uh, I want to know more because, listen, I don't doubt for one second, and I know this you know, quite well myself, Yes, there are a lot of bots out there. There's a lot of whatever. But I'm not sure it could be most. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get a lot, I get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of negativity on my Twitter. Like, if you want to go up and read the mentions when I when I put the ratings out, I mean, there's, there's like a lot of insanity up there. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure that I would believe that most of that is is anti-AW bots. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. I've never commissioned a study. But I, I do know that, like, you know, we do we do shows on on uh, YouTube and on Twitch, and uh, the you know the Twitch chat here you you pay. Uh, actually, I don't know if you pay for no, you don't pay for the the free. Anyway, point is, there's a Twitch chat and a YouTube chat, and uh, they're very very different. Uh, the the Twitch chat, uh, you know, it's it's more, more intelligent. Well, that's... And if you're on the YouTube chat and you're insulted by that, then go over to the Twitch chat. And I think one of the big differences is the Twitch chat is more heavily moderated. So, like, if you're just a total idiot, you're not going to last on the Twitch chat. Whereas if you're a total idiot on the YouTube chat, you're just a total idiot. And, you know, people mock you and everything like that. But I don't think there's a lot of banning or anything like that. But the point is, I mean, there's a lot of real people that are doing this. So yeah. I wouldn't be sitting here saying that, like, most of the YouTube chat is bots. I don't believe that. I mean, they interact with people and, and you know, I, whatever you want to say about bots, they usually don't get insulted. People speak wild so, with no repercussions, and yes. they're able to do that, and they, they let it out. And sometimes it's their real feelings. A lot of times people are just trolling or poking at people to get a reaction. And 
you know, with AEW. Look, there are people that are going to watch the product that honestly go, you know what, that's just not for me. So my point of all of this very quickly is, like, are most of these, is most of this anti-AEW sentiment bots? I would actually like to see that data there. I don't believe, like, I don't uh, disbelieve for one second that there are anti-AEW bots, and probably a lot of them out there. But to say it's most, like, I'd be interested in that. Because I don't think it's most on my timeline. I think it's it's a portion of it, maybe even a sizable, but not most. I think it's just a Dude, bunch of I don't know. Like I was saying, nutty and I'll people. just cut you off now since you cut me off there. It, there are just people that, one, either aren't going to like the product because they just don't like it, and they might say that, and that gets a reaction out of people. There are people that are going to be obtuse about it. And not, there's all sorts of people out there that are saying all sorts of things. And I, I to me, does it... <laughs> It doesn't matter. I, I don't think that that swing of, of public sentiment on social media should not be an end all and be all. It shouldn't be that important it, to me. This is if this is leading to something else more diabolical. And that's where I want to see the size of the fire, because to just say that there's people who don't like your product or people get whipped into a frenzy by these bots. I mean, that's how public opinion goes and the court of public opinion goes there's always somebody to sway it in media if it wasn't bots on here it would be media or whatever it would be but like if there's more to this as far as who is is running these bots or for is it more of not just swinging public opinion but it's to do something else that's what i want to know that's the only thing i would care about i don't care about the numbers just who it is back in a moment observer Relationship between AEW and New Japan has taken another step forward. It was announced Friday. Weekly episodes of Dynamite and Rampage are coming to New Japan World in Japan soon. Announcement indicated a Japanese live version of the AEW programming is also being planned. AEW content being added at no additional cost to New Japan World subscribers. Tony Khan responded to the announcement saying, We did it! Chris Charlson noted it is a regional deal for Japan only. So essentially, if you live in Japan and you subscribe to New Japan Strong, you'll now be able to watch Dynamite and Rampage for free on the service. So that is an update there. Tony also says he's having conversations with Warner Media about the future of Ring of Honor. Spoke with ESPN recently, said he hopes Ring of Honor will continue as a weekly series with major events similar to Supercard of Honor. I've been having more conversations with Warner Media about what we can do together to grow Ring of Honor. I think it would make sense for them to continue as a weekly series and major events like we just had with Supercard. I think the success of Supercard critically and commercially will bode very well for Warner Media really taking an interest in Ring of Honor as well as AEW. He revealed he utilized AEW resources to produce Supercard of Honor with the permission of Warner Media. I did utilize some resources from AEW with permission from Warner, with the understanding from them that I was not going to make this an AEW show. It'd be a Ring of Honor show. I was asking to utilize some AEW resources to make this a great pay-per-view, which, of course, is interesting because that story was that uh, Warner Media wanted nothing to do with the Briscoes, and the Briscoes worked this show where he got permission from Warner Media to utilize AEW resources. So we'll see where that goes. 20,000 buys on traditional pay-per-view and streaming, not including Honor Club. More than 2,000 people showed up at the event. And then, of course, we've got... uh, Actually, I don't have it here. Where did I put it? Anyway, there's going to be a uh, time change for Rampage next week, which is... uh, I'll get the time here in a moment. But, of course, that's to show that as the uh, AEW World Heavyweight Championship match between Hangman Page and uh, Adam Cole, and uh, not really the show you want to have to switch a time slot, but uh, things have happened, so I'll get that here in a moment. I wonder what else... Unless uh... Mike's doing it right now, no? All right, I'll find it. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, started I started typing, up, so I thought you were going to find it. Well, I was actually looking up Warner Media subsidiaries right now to find out exactly what they own, where ROH could be a good fit, because, you know, it talked about, like, True TV as being a place where maybe Rampage could go or something like that, and I don't know if True TV numbers in front of me. I'm not sure, like, what their plan is, how they look at that channel over the next couple of years, but... You know, there there you go. That That's one spot, at least, I can think of off the top of my head because I can't see it ever being on TBS or TNT. AEW wouldn't be a good idea for them to even have that on there. People have said HBO Max. 
Not a good idea for ROH. A good idea for AEW, maybe, because, you know, they get that direct connection. But I'm, I'm sorry, ROH is going to get lost in the sauce. It gets lost during, you know, over the last couple of years in the wrestling, you know, with wrestling fans. It goes on HBO Max. It's like a lot of those movies that Netflix gets that get rave reviews at these, you know, movie showings and these film festivals. They buy all of them. They throw them all on there. You know, and then it's just this, you know, jumbled mess and you don't really have any focus. The best thing you can do with Ring of Honor is try to put the most focus you can on it. And that's going to be on a major cable channel. It certainly to me isn't going to be streaming. But again, if they can if they can do something with a service on their own because they have that library in AEW all access where. They can heavily promote Ring of Honor, you know, and I know people say, well, they have dark, they have elevation, they talk about. No, if they if they really have commercials on that they, you know, insert into Dynamite about this is what's going to happen on ROH, I think that's how you can do that. But then again, I don't know how quickly you can turn around and actually start a streaming service either. All right, so uh, next week's Rampage will air in a different time slot due to TNT's coverage of the NBA playoffs. TNT's. By the way, you remember when uh, they moved uh, Dynamite to TBS so they wouldn't have to uh, run into the uh, NBA playoffs? Well, now we're having the same problem with a Rampage. April 15th episode is listed as airing at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Three hours earlier than usual. This will be the third time in as many months Rampage has aired in a different time slot due to TNT basketball coverage. This, of course, is the show where... Uh, Adam Page and Adam Cole are in a Texas death match for the AEW championship. And then afterwards, they're taping the uh, the Battle of the Belts. So uh, if you want to know who's winning those matches, you'll know on Friday night. But, I mean, if it's me, I would strongly consider delaying this match a week. Unless there's a possibility this is going to happen the next week as well. Because putting your AEW World Championship match on... Because the whole point of this is to boost the Rampage numbers. Uh, going out of your time slot is going to affect the numbers one way or the other. Not to mention, part of the reason that you would want to put a huge match on Rampage is to get people thinking, okay, well, I should watch it every Friday in its normal time slot. Instead, you've got a different time slot now. For Pacific... I mean, there's no point in putting this thing here. Did, it's not going to be. Did they know this? I mean, I'm not sure. I don't think they did know this. With, That's why I'm saying they should change their mind about when it's when this match is going on. Well, because Battle of the Belts is the next day, right? Yes. So maybe they do do something where you know they they are advertising this right now, and they may actually do something, have an angle where they bump it to, to Battle of the Belts. That's. You know, I, I I don't know, but that's uh, it's something you could do, I guess. Well, you could, but I mean, there's a reason. They're loading up Rampage because the Rampage numbers are doing under five hundred thousand viewers. I know, I know. We so I know it. if you're gonna if you're gonna do big matches to to boost Rampage, then I don't think you start on a show when it's been preempted. Yeah. Uh, wait, I mean, it can wait a week, right? I don't know how they would do it because they normally uh, they normally they have are a never going to have an easy road <laughs> at ten o'clock on Fridays, and I understand completely one hundred percent. Why, because of his position with the Jacksonville Jaguars, why he has taken the road that he has, but he is severely again. You, there are pros and cons to that, and, and you no know, pun intended. But this is a big one in, in pushing yourself into that position only on Fridays because there's no, there is no good time on that day. And yes, no Dave today. He's at the dentist. Must have your plan. But even though he's not on the show, you can read. The newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which is right up, uh, up right now at WrestlingObserver.com. And uh, obviously it's one of the bigger issues of the year because it's got full coverage of all of WrestleMania weekend. So if you want the uh, star ratings for all the matches, his thoughts on night one, night two, and obviously uh, you get all of the business notes for uh, WrestleMania. For those of you that, uh, you know, you historians on my timeline that actually care about history... Uh, you can get the actual history by reading The Observer as opposed what to the uh, fake history. 
who was this person? Because I remember you said that on Monday or something. You got into an, an argument or somebody tried to pick one with you about the attendance of all things. And I'm thinking, was this a real historian? No, or it was actually, one of those well, bots it, that Tony Khan no, is talking No, it wasn't about? a bot at all. And, and, and <laughs> you know, it was a guy. And, uh, you know, he was all angry at Dave and I because we'd had the temerity to say what the actual attendance was for WrestleMania. He didn't want to hear it. And uh, he got mad about it, and he started tweeting about how, you know, we were horrible and wrong and this and that. And I, and for some reason, like, so I don't know how this whole Twitter thing works, but, like, if I post the ratings, okay, there's a little thing that says, you know, 8,000 comments or some stupid thing. And so, like, if I click on that, then I can scroll through all of these this stupidity, all right? But for some reason, at random... Twitter will choose some of those responses and just put them on my timeline. So I see them, even if I'm not looking for them. So I saw this guy's thing, and I was like, wait a second. I just had this desire to, like, who is this geek? And so I I, uh, I went to his timeline, and, you know, he's got his description of who he is and everything like that. And it was all about how he's a history buff. And, you know, usually, you know, people say a bunch of stupid stuff, and then you go up there, and it's like, you know, they got a picture of Seth Rollins and whatever, and it's like, okay, I got it. But uh, <laughs> this guy, it's like, he seemed like a normal guy who was into history, yet he was angry that we would give you the actual historical numbers for how many people were, and so I was just flabbergasted. So anyway, I couldn't help myself on that one. I had to respond. Well, hey, let me let me respond to something yesterday because I got some some anger in the the YouTube uh, comments and and on Twitter about the talking about the tag teams and the Young Bucks calling the Young Bucks greatest tag team of all time. And I believe when we were talking about that, I said, you know, in my world, they, they probably wouldn't be in the top 10. One of the reasons you absolutely why is, said that. Yeah, because in my world, for me personally, I've always thought the Briscoes have been a better team this whole time. It's been more of a style that I've liked. Now, two things can be true. When you take the, and they don't get enough credit for this, and, and they actually get more credit for it now than ever, but when you look at what the Young Bucks did, getting their merchandise into play, all of those things, like, that's why, I, because I took a bunch of heat for saying that they are a no-brainer, first ballot, Hall of Fame tag team. And I, you know what, if it was out of my personal realm and I started looking at, okay, and you really take a studious approach to this and you go, okay, we're going to take the greatest tag teams of all time and really take everything into account and put them in there, they're in there. They're probably in the top 10. It's just for me personally, uh, you know, there were tag teams I liked more. I've been watching wrestling for 40 years. There has been a lot of things that I've liked more than this. And there's been a lot of great teams that I've watched from all over the world. So two things can be true there, <laughs> you know, and that's like I thought we were talking about my personal. Yeah, they, they probably wouldn't fall in my top 10. But are they a top 10 all time tag team? Maybe. Jim Valley will discuss that tomorrow on Observer Live at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, will he ever? Maybe you should listen. Oh, I should, shouldn't I? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Quick, and I'm going to move on. I'm begging you, Semp, not to do a follow-up. Let's just move past it. Cody and Semp, or Cody and whatever his name is, Seth, was four and a half stars, okay? Holy smokes. And you know what's even more crazy that everybody obsessing over what the rating was this morning? You geeks that were sure it was a conspiracy that it wasn't in the Observer. He forgot to type four stars and a number and a thing and another number. I think I it's miss, been put in already. Okay? I missed I miss last weekend's WrestleMania weekend Golly, so much for all of the matches God's that people name is were up talking with people. about. People were saying they were having a great time. They were loving everything about wrestling. Things were good. And then and then Monday came. And it's been all downhill from there. <laughs> it really is. I don't I don't know why people will ever get that upset and it's from day one about Dave's. Weren't we gonna move on opinion. so we'd have to talk about ratings, star ratings? I, Golly, you help brought me. brought this crap up. I know, I said let's move on together. past it. Come well, on. Why the hell did you even bring it up? You you do this. You wanna know you why? Feed into this because crap and then you wonder why other people feed into this all crap. All day what the rating is. So I'm just gonna tell you and then move on. If you this guy, if you would just then listen give to the all. show, give I already all. told you earlier. Give them all, then. What else did he rate? WWE What did pays. he rate Bianca and Becky? That's what I want to know. 
Let's see here. That's what matters. Oh, I don't want to talk about that because uh, there may be more to it. All right. If you want what? Texas, 425-780-7566. 425-780-7566. Seven five six six. What's on your mind today, everybody? Are you sure you want to find out what are on these people's minds today? Person says I had a similar reaction at first to Tony Khan's tweets, but it is not unfounded either. He says people just need to look at the online political discourse over the last five years, and the same thing has been found there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously there are, there are bots out there. Now, now here's the thing: what's going on here? That's what this is all going to be about, okay? If it's just a bunch of bots saying negative things about AEW, there's not a story, okay? But, um, you know, there might Who's be a programming story. programming the bots? And he That's might, my thing. Yes, and we, Somebody we don't... Somebody starts those accounts. We don't know that's, any of that yet. That's where... That's where what i would want to know it's like the people that you know because we've heard this with bitcoin especially i guess in the last couple of days i guess peter thiel said something and elon musk is always saying something and it's like you know there's not that many people here but then you have repeaters everywhere just shooting this stuff out there making it bigger than it is and then you go back okay well who who has an interest in this why would this be done why would this much effort be put in and again, that's where if there's more to this, then that's what I want to know. I don't care about, you know, it's like dealing with the, the mafia or drug dealing or any of that stuff. Like you can have all these people on the street. I'm not looking at that. What I want to see are the people at the top because somebody is doing it. And that to me is the only important thing here. Well, and obviously, the that's, that's the whole that, story. That's the whole that's story. It. Yeah. I mean, I there, he wants to find out who is behind this. And if he finds out, I mean, there may be a lot more. This is not just, here's the point. It's not just some random tweets where he's telling you they're bots, okay? There was a study commission. It was a real study with a real group. And clearly, I mean, they must have found enough that he's confident enough to tweet out about it. And there's going to be a lot more to come. This is not just, hey, I woke up today and I want to tell you there's a bunch of bots. And hey, watch Rampage tonight. <laughs> That's not what this is. It's not the ravings of a lunatic. This person here says, don't you find it ironic how WWE fires Nash Carter for that photo, yet once filed a trademark Gunther Stark? Yeah, that was... Uh... Well, I mean, here's, here's the difference, okay? And you're not wrong, the irony here, okay? Yes, but, yeah. you know, it can easily be claimed. It can easily be claimed. We didn't know that he was a Nazi commander. We trademarked a random name... And then a bunch of people, uh, these damn internet fans, did a bunch of googling, yeah, well, and they made a big we deal out of it. We were GI Joe thing, and, and then, then <laughs> we, we, you know, we dropped the last name when we found out they can easily plead innocence here. Yeah. It's a lot more difficult to plead innocence when you tweet out a picture of yourself in a, you know, a Hitler mustache yeah. doing the. Uh, so yeah, there's a big difference here. And here's everybody. the thing too: it's like people have got well, ha haven't you know people shaved and you've shaved your mustache, your beard, and what? Yes, given myself the Harley race, done all those things. Never gave myself the Charlie Chaplin uh, Hitler thing though. And if I did, which I did not, uh, why would you take a picture of it? And then why would you take a picture of it with your hand up? Now that's the problem, and that may be people are stupid and kids are stupid and kids do stupid things and. Everybody lives their entire life in social media now and on the internet and all that sort of stuff, and those mistakes are going to be amplified. But, like, well, those are also the breaks because once you do that pose with that on your face, you know, it's always going to be there. It's like blackface and a lot of other things. You know, you should have known better no matter what your age is. If you're able to shave, sucker, you probably should have known better. All right, uh... Wrestling Inc., this is an update uh, to the story. It's on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. Wrestling Inc. reached out to Khan for comment and got the following response. Tony Khan said, Waiting for final study, but here is what my expert confirmed. It's people with real live accounts making posts and then using their bots to manipulate the social channel algorithm by backing them up with engagement from a made-up Twitter identity. Social media teams will often fight on this. Bots are great for numbers, and when they're gone, you'll see a dip in digital conversation impressions. Both those were either negative sentiment or not real anyway. For example, I tweet... 
Uh, Mega only eats rotten bananas. I throw, say, 18 bots behind it, which takes about five minutes to do. Twitter security can differentiate when done well, and neither can most social teams. The problem becomes... Every time people type Mega to the search bar because of a real account supported by bots, the first suggested result would be tweets about Mega eating rotten bananas. I'm oversimplifying, but that's my five-cent version of what's happening. I'm too old for this. Uh-huh. That's what but I'm anyway, thinking right now. the point is... <laughs> I'm thinking maybe you know so much about this. Are you doing this too? You, like... I don't know. Uh, I... Mm. This is all, well, uh, like I said, I'll someone who doesn't own an analytics is. company. Can you explain this to me in English? Please. But the yes. point is, there's something here. He's not making this up. <laughs> can, can, can we get some layman speak on the uh, the analytics uh, talk, please? Good He's Lord. like, how is this hard to understand? It's hard to understand because I don't live on the Internet and on Twitter. I have a disconnect here somewhere. I mean, if, he wants, if he wants to write about how to use an air fryer, I mean, I don't understand that. Okay, by the way, uh, NXT new NXT you? Tag Team Champions no will be crowned on Tuesday's episode of NXT. Following the release of Nash Carter, WWE announced the NXT Tag Team titles have been officially relinquished. New champions will be crowned on NXT this Tuesday. WWE has not revealed how the new champions will be determined. But they Nor will they be... add any detail into anything else as crowned. to why it happened either. No. Probably going to be the Creed brothers. Should be. I mean, they could change it again, but I'm I'm 99% sure that the Creed brothers were supposed to win on Saturday. And in, in typical WWE fashion, they changed the plan to put the belts on MSK and then immediately had to fire one half of the team. So well, anyway. British Breezango. What were their names? Well, Pretty Deadly is going to be deadly. feuding with the Creed. So I guess it's possible that to get heat... You know, they could mix it up and Pretty Deadly could just win and then the Creeds could chase them for the titles. But I'm pretty sure they were supposed to win and then they would be attacked by Pretty Deadly and that would be their first feud as champions. Which would have made sense because that's where I was like, Pretty Deadly was the UK tag. They were the UK tag champions for a long time, were they not? Yeah. Okay, so that, yeah, that would, that would make sense as to why they, you know, the Creed brothers should have, I don't know, should have won, but why they, it looks like they, they would have won before the plans changed and they went in that direction, but mm, they got to do a lot more with getting over those guys though, because again, I'm not sure how many people watched NXT UK and you have those two guys coming in and it's like, I hope they drive home some packages and things like that. All righty. Uh, thoughts on Tony Khan's comments on Blood and Guts returning this summer, thinking we may get Jericho Sports Entertainers against the Blackpool Combat Club. Holy smokes. Well, listen, you know what I like? I like that what he only like? said it's going to be this summer. He didn't give an exact date. Because that always irritated me with Hell in a Cell. It's like, Hell in a Cell will be October, and so whoever happens to be feuding in October will just have a match in a cell. As opposed to what it should be, which is when you have the right two and the right feud... At the right time, with the right build, that's when you do the cell match. So uh, at some point this summer, it'll be the right people, in the right feud, at the right time, and this will be the right match. So for those asking when you're going to see it again, there's your answer. That's why I always hate themed pay-per-views. You know, like Hell in the Cell or the, all that sort of stuff. And I know everybody goes, well, the TNA Cage one. That Okay, yes. For the little bit of a bump they could get for that company, I guess it was worth it them doing that. But, like, to, to build towards pay-per-views that are already this month and you're not building towards it in a long way where you actually have a reason to blow that match off inside that stipulation, it just it drives me nuts. It's one of those small things, you know, it doesn't kill my enjoyment altogether, but I just shake my head and it's like, why? Why do a War Games if you don't have a 4-4-0 and a second gear crew and Nick Gage? Why do that if you don't have, you know the right stuff to do it with then it's just the throwaway and it doesn't mean anything and that's why people look back and go they think about ones that had happened 10 and 20 years ago you know with the dangerous alliance and with the horsemen and things like that and people remember those more than the ones that have happened in the last couple all right this person goes is the idea of an anti-aw bot army any more unbelievable than the idea that aw only sells out shows because tony khan buys all the tickets well you see these are two completely different things oh, jesus because uh it is it is absolutely there's no question that they're bots zero not there's no question whatsoever 
Folks that believe that AW only sells tickets because Tony buys them, these people are simpletons. They are walnut-brained hadrosaurs. Because there is absolutely, positively, not one shred of evidence that that's the case. It's not even like you think about it much like, okay, well, you know, they went to uh, they went to Chicago. It sold out, so, you know, he bought all the tickets. Well, he bought all the tickets, so... Not only does he have to buy the tickets, but, like, he has to buy all of the different people to actually be in the seats. So it's not it's one of those people has ever come forward with, like, oh, here's a text message chain. Tony hired yeah. me. You know, here's my W whatever. N not one single person. And then it's like, okay, well, if he if he's buying the tickets, then how come every now and then, you know, a sellout is, like, 9400 and they get, like, 9350 he didn't have fifty dollars. He didn't have fifty tickets worth to sell that thing out. He he almost sold it out, but then like the last fifty, he didn't do. Oh, but that's you know he just he didn't want people to think that he bought them all, so he saved. He left fifty seats on. Really? Well, how come he bought all the tickets for the other show? How come they run in Chicago and sell out, but then you know two times later they don't sell out? He forgot to buy tickets for that. It's absolute complete madness. That conspiracy theory. But we do know there are bots. But to what degree? I don't know. I, don't I can't know. believe that they even made that comparison. I just, I can. Yeah. Actually, yes, I can. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Uh, do you think they are leading in too much with the Texas death match with the hangman? I know that's his thing. The match is going to rule. But do you think they are doing that kind of match too much? Well, if people stop watching, then yes. If not, no. Although we're not going to be able to tell for this one because the show's been preempted. So, you know, <laughs> once again... We will have the Walnut Brain Hadrosaurs. It will make uh, conclusions about whether people actually wanted to see this match, even though it's out of its time slot and airing at 4 o'clock p.m. on the West Coast. Anyway, back in a moment, Observer Live. This person here explains, Real people make a tweet. They use bots to spam retweets, likes, and replies. This promotes the tweet. Basically, the tweet is real, but the trendingness of it is fake due to the bots i got it thank you thank you whoever sent that in it was a random text message with the management uh, changes involved with warner brothers and discovery merger how much will this affect aw no clue but it might really help ring of honor that's another one i think we talked about a couple weeks ago with dave on here about discovery media maybe interested in something like that especially as you see tlc and all these other channels with reality programming and lots of other things like that may maybe an option uh again visibility is going to be important because if it's on destination america like it was last time around I don't care how much hype it gets, you're going to have problems. So you never know, though. It's a good, it's at least a possibility for them. This person wants the Super Elite versus RoboCop, Sting, Darby, and the Hardys for Blood and Guts. I'm not sure we're going to get RoboCop, yeah. although he's probably available. I don't think he's doing a lot these days. Of all the things to go back and get, let's not revisit RoboCop in pro wrestling, please. Unless it's Joey Janela's spring break, then maybe you can have it. Yeah, I never thought about that before, but this person's right. Bot Hell Washington. Maybe that's what this is all about here. Hmm. Yeah, they got a sign out front, welcome to Bothell for a day or a lifetime. And the kids always scratch out the bot. So it says, welcome to hell. So it's very much like social media, this whole beautiful Bothell Washington place. Anyway, we're out of here. I want to thank Mike, as always, <laughs> callers and listeners over the studio. Have a great weekend. Go touch grass. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.